question is from Chase Tuning. I'm dealing with a torn rotator cuff and AC joint sprain. How would you advise training around this injury? Now, Sal, this is this happened to you, right? Did you not sprain yours? I I had I didn't have a tear in my rotator cuff, but I did have a, a slip separation in my AC joint, a slight separation. Now, do you think the tear in the rotator cuff is due to the issue with the AC joint, and maybe that's it's put stress on the rotator? I don't know cuff? which one came first. You know, they 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 you tend to see more than one thing. So you'll see like bicep tendon inflammation, rotator cuff tear, and then some AC joint issues. You, you tend to see more than one problem when somebody hurts their shoulder, especially if it's an injury. Um, you know, not like just working out and it hurts, but rather he fell or did something to it. I don't know what Chase right. did exactly to his shoulder, but I'll say this when it comes to an injury. Um, now, basic is just train everything but uh, that area. So do all the stuff that you can do and don't do anything that you can't do. Now, some people will be like, oh, my God, I, you know, I want to be able to work that area out. Am I going to lose muscle? You will. You will lose muscle in that area. But it comes back really fast. Um, muscle memory is a, is a pretty awesome thing. Here's the other thing, too. Don't make this mistake of not working out at all. Uh, studies have shown that if you train, for example, old studies will show that if you train like your right arm and don't right. train your left arm, you'll definitely gain more muscle in your right arm than your left. But there's some carryover. There is some carryover. So, you know, your, your rotator cuff is torn. Your AC joint hurts. That doesn't mean you can't work out your lower body. It doesn't mean you can't do things, simple exercises like curls and tricep extensions. I would even maybe add, depending on how it feels, some real light shoulder movements, maybe not any presses, but right. maybe some light maybe lateral, more like isometrics. Too. I feel like this they is where great and safe. Yeah, I feel like it. this is where like Prime Pro comes in handy. Like, I mean, I would live in those type of movements, dude. Yeah, all yeah, the mobility work. Yeah, just, you just want to know where those thresh, where the thresholds lie, like where where the pain, uh, you know, is is definitely obvious, and, and to to find those ranges, and then you know, just 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 work into it, back off, work into it, back off, really slow, really gradual, not too much intensity, but still, like movement is medicine. So there there is that element there where you know you want to consider not just being completely immobilized. Yeah, personally, I would be. I would be less likely to take a client through exercises that are surrounding the shoulder that I'm going to have to use it at all that with weight. And I would be just doing a lot of mobility work on the shoulder. I would be doing a lot of trying to challenge threading the needle and wall circles and handcuff with rotation. See, just your body weight so that if it does hurt or you feel it, you take it to that end range and you try and challenge that end range. Because one of the number one things that I would see problems with with like torn rotator cuffs and, and shoulder issues is the the buildup of scar tissue after it's healed because you limit yourself from doing anything because, oh, that, that bothers me if I lift my shoulder up that high. Oh, if I turn it internally, rotate this much. Oh, that bothers me there. So they don't do anything and they stay away from it. Then it finally heals up. Right, but then you, you run into like frozen shoulder. Yes. Now it's locked in place and then yes. that's going to affect the other shoulder. It's a big problem at that well, point. Well, a lot of this depends on how bad the tear is. A lot of people right. get a tear. We don't know enough about it. Yeah, let's be it could be like a part, like a real small tear in the supraspinatus. If it's a full tear, you're gonna need surgery. Yeah. Um, if it's a sh if it's a tiny tear, oftentimes the, the your your doctor will say you could just rest and let it heal. In which case, mobility work is probably not a bad idea. But here's what you have to do: you have to really pay attention to what your body's telling you while you're going through these movements. Just because something's a mobility movement doesn't mean it won't hurt you more if you're not smart about it. I mean, you could do handcuff with rotation, have a really bad rotator cuff tear. And really fucking tear it. Yeah, okay, you're not true. trying to press through the pain. That's for for sure. No, the idea is you take it to the in, the end range. That's mm -hmm. a, the idea is not that you work through it or yeah. push through it. And I think there's there's more risk at doing that with doing weighted exercises, yes. i.e., seated rows, chest pressing, doing things thinking like, okay, I can do this. It's okay because all that takes is a little bit of the you to come out of like bad or come out of good command mechanics and poor form and the shoulder just not in an optimal place for that to really fuck it up. And then now you're holding on to, you know, hundred pounds on the barbell or you're doing something way more risky than if you're doing something like a hand cover with rotation and you're like, Ooh, okay. Ow, that hurts right there. And it's just right. you, you're taking yourself through that range of motion with no weight or resistance. 
you're in my yeah. opinion you're far you're you're far better off and if you were to gradually incorporate resistance i'd probably start with rubber bands as a, as a way to kind of gradually bring that in so at least it it you know it goes with your natural strength curve so that way it's like it, you know you'll feel the most stress in your strongest point yeah when i when i had my shoulder surgery i i cut the recovery time in half oh, excuse me more than half probably down two-thirds uh, by what the doctor told me, uh, how long it was going to take. I remember, I don't remember exactly how long he said, but he told me, you know, by this date, um, you should be okay to, to train, you know, moderately heavy. And it was way sooner than that. And it was just, I was just rehabbing it, but I was very careful. I was moving it to its end range. Oop, that doesn't hurt that kind of, okay, let's, let's stay within that range of motion. Can't go any further, but I would test it little by little. And it was remarkable. And I did lose a shit ton of muscle initially. I remember I wore, I had to wear this shoulder brace and I had the whole deal. You know what I mean? I had the the, the pain pump. You ever seen that where they, they actually have a catheter directly to the, oh, the yeah. site of surgery and you push it for, I had that in there for a while or whatever. And I remember when I took everything off and I looked in the mirror and this is for someone who's like works out for you know, their whole life. I'm looking in the mirror. I'm like, oh, this sucks. Like <laughs> it looks like this arm, there's, like it's all it's gone. Shrunk. Yeah. It's all gone. It came back so fast, like yeah. so fast. That that muscle memory is, and now I have no issues. I mean, I have a little bit, a little bit of loss of stability in my left shoulder, but that's not because, uh, I, you know, because I lost muscle. It's because part of my AC joint was resected, and it's never going to come back. But aside from that, it came back very, very quickly. So, yeah, I would go like what we're saying: go through, listen to your body, go through the movements, easy, challenge your range of motion, but be smart about it. Uh, the parts of your body you can train hard, go for it. If you can train your legs hard, go for it. You probably can't barbell squat because of reaching back to grab the bar. Fine. No need to do that. There's leg press. There's lunges. There's other exercises you can do for your lower body. And just keep the rest of your body strong, and that'll mitigate uh, some of the, the, water, the loss of strength. Water stuff is really cool for this, too. Oh, being in the pool? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Being able to go in the pool and, like, because then you get, like, a little bit of resistance with the water, but just enough to where it's still really easy and not very risky. So I remember going just through the Achilles and my knee, being able to do work in the pools is, is a nice place to progress. Like I start with just my my own body, my own resistance and control and challenging that. As I start to progress, water is the next place I like to go. Mm -hmm. And then maybe like Justin said, bands and then eventually back into weights. Yeah, and, and things that help speed up recovery um, besides the obvious, get good sleep, have a good diet, you know, train properly and appropriately. Um, red light therapy. You know, so there's some studies that show that it helps speed up uh, the your recovery. Um, sauna use seems to speed up recovery at very at the very least. It reduces pain. Um, so those are a couple things you can do to help speed up the process. But the biggest things are going to be get good sleep uh, and make sure your diet is good.